It is audacity, it is arrogance, it is pride, it is spiritual arrogance to think you and I are high priests after the order of Melchizedek and we can enter the Holy of Holies when Israel couldn't do it except one man and the, and the pattern on earth was patterned after the original in heaven and so we know that only one man can enter the Holy of Holies in heaven. Thank you. But that's not what religion teaches. Religion teaches you can enter the Holy of Holies. You got to get the right song, and you're in. You got to get the right prayer, and you're in. You got to get the right teaching, and you go right in. And the reason you're not in the Holy of Holies is because you don't have a right teacher. You need me as your pastor. And the worship, if you get the, if you get a if you get a hold of the ruach and the right worship leader and the right song and the right atmosphere and a good Sunday morning br brunch right before service and get your belly full of pork, then you'll feel relaxed and then you'll feel full. Have a nice breakfast, pork and, and muffins in in the basement. Come upstairs, grab a hold of the cross, and go right into the holy of holies. And if you don't go into the Holy of Holies, it's because the worship's not good, or the lights are not proper, or the pastor's not preaching right. But all things being equal, you can enter the Holy of Holies. Because don't you know when Yeshua died, the, the veil rent in front of the Holy of Holies. Really. Show it to me. I have extra cash right now in the bank. I'll be happy to impart it to you. Show it to me. I, I, I'm crazy enough and humble enough that if I'm wrong, I'll admit I didn't see something. Is this teaching prevalent everywhere in the world? I don't care what denomination. We enter the Holy of Holies. We enter by the blood of the Lamb. My goodness gracious, where have we gone wrong? Why do we take it incumbent upon ourselves to change the word of Yahweh? Why? Is it, is it an inclination? Is it Yetzir Hara? Is it the evil inclination that we're born with? I mean, I, I thought myself a lot of things, but I, one thing I know, I'm not the high priest over anybody's house. <clears throat> the holy place is never called the most holy place. The Makom Kadosh the Hekel is never called the Kadosh HaKadoshim. You gotta know a little Hebrew to confirm what I'm sharing with you. Okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to teach you Hebrew, I'm trying to clue you in. The most, the most holy place is the Kadosh HaKadoshim. Not just the holy place, but the holy place of all set-apart places. The set-apart place is known as the set-apart place and the Hekel. Where do the where do the daily animal sacrifices take place? In the Hekel. Hello? That's where we enter. By the sacrifice of Yeshua, we can, even though we're not Levites biologically, we may not be Levites biologically, it doesn't matter what our, our biology is, we can now enter the set apart place. It says over and over in the book of Hebrews, you can enter the set-apart place by the blood of Yeshua. That, did it say you can enter the Holy of Holies? No. But we can enter the set-apart place. Why? Because that was where the sacrifices were made daily in our lives so we can be cleansed in our life in Yahweh. So we now have access to the set-apart place. That's what Hebrews says. Go through the book of Hebrews. We have access to the set-apart place. But never does it say we have access to the most holy place. What's another way to say the most holy place? Makom David. The place where Yahweh does the speaking and we get and the, the one person gets to do the listening. Same now. How does Yahweh speak to you? Well, Rabbi, you don't know what you're talking about. Yahweh speaks to me. Really? 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 It's not the Father, because if he did, you'd melt like yesterday's bag of MMs. He doesn't speak to you. He goes to the Son, who is in the Holy of Holies, and the Son goes out to the holy place where you and I are, drawing near, and our high priest clues us in to what the Father Yahweh is saying. 
I know you like to think that you get your orders right between the cherubim. I know that. That's for spiritual pride and arrogance. Rabbi, I don't receive that. I go right to the cherubim. I go, I go, I stand right in front of the Ark of the Covenant, and I get, I get my marching orders directly from Yahweh. Holy, holy. Well, pardon me. Isn't that what the Pope says he does? That he is vicarious Philus, Philus Deus. That he is the vicar of the son of, of Deus. So, in other words, you're the Pope. If you if you get that your orders directly from the Holy of Holies, you are the Pope. Turn to your neighbor and say, you ain't pretty enough to be the Pope. <laughs> Isn't that why many of us don't like the Pope? Because he claims to be the vicar of the Son of God. Well, what do you claim to be? If you can go to the Holy of Holies, stand in front of the Ark of the Covenant, have, have the Father speak directly to you, what makes you any different? Then you're a, you're, you're a Pope, you're a Holy Father, and you ought to pick up your apartment and move to Vatican City. Uh-huh. So how do we hear Yahweh's voice? You should have said, my sheep hear my voice. The Father gives directive to the Son, and the Son portrays that message to you through his voice. He is the Kohen Haggadol, and he gets it right from the Holy of Holies in heaven, the tabernacle, not pitched with man's hands, and you and I are out there because now the veil has been torn, and we have access to the Hekel. We don't have access to the speaking place. If we did, why would we need to shoot? If we had access to the Holy of Holies, the, the uh, Kadosh HaGoshim, why would we need to shoot? Then we can go right in there ourselves. That's not called biblical truth, that's called popery. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not into popery. I'll be honest with you, I'd rather smell the stuff than be it. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. You've got to know a little Hebrew to know the separation. When the Baruch HaDashah says, the veil of the set apart place was rent, is it lying? No, it, it means what it says. The veil of the, of the Hekel. Ooh, the veil of the Hekel. Can we prove there was a veil in from the Hekel, in front of the Hekel, to the outer court? Yeah. We know there was a veil between the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place. Can we prove there was a veil? Now religion says, no. The only veil was between the most set apart place and the set apart place. But by the time I get through with you today, I'm going to show you that there was a veil in front of the Hekel. We know that in the tabernacle, that's true. Because there was the outer court, followed by a veil, followed by the what? The, the, the holy place. So we know there was a veil in front of the, the, um, the, the, the holy place in the tabernacle, but we don't know if that's true in Solomon's temple, and we don't know if that's true in Ezra and Nehemiah's temple. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Another way to say the most holy place, or the Kadosh HaGoshim, is, let's, let's review, number one, Dosh Shim. Number two, Makom Davir, where Yahweh speaks, between the cherubims on top of the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. And the third term used in Tanakh for the uh, Holy of Holies is Be'et Laparoket. Write that down. Be'et Laparoket, between or inside the veil. Inside the veil. It said in Hebrews 9, Yeshua has gone inside the veil. You haven't. The Hebrew term is Beit la paroket, inside the veil. It is used in Vayikra. Let's go quickly. Vayikra 16. Is anyone enjoying? Yes. Vayikra 16, 2. Now we said to Moshe, speak to Aaron, your brother, not to come at all times in the set up, in the set apart place, inside the veil, or what? Mebet la paroket before the lid of atonement, which is on the ark, lest he die. Lest he die. Now go down to verse 12. I'm talking about the term inside the veil. Mebet la paroket. Verse 12. He will take a fire holder filled with burning coals with his hands filled with sweet incense, beaten fine, and bring it inside the veil. What do you think that term is? Mebet la parroquia. Jump down to verse 15. 
Um, he will slaughter the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people, and shall bring its blood inside the veil. So let's review. How do we refer to the Holy of Holies? Kadosh Adoshim. Number one, Kadosh Adoshim. Number two, Makom Da Vir, where Yahweh speaks. And thirdly, inside the veil, or Beit La Paroche. Go back to Hebrews. Where is Yeshua and where are we? Go back to Hebrews. Ibrim. Ibrim. Someone's going to get this. And if you don't, get the tape. Because you'll hear it again and again. The message won't change. Ibrim. Um, Hebrews 10 and uh, 20. Hebrews 10 and 20. By a new and living way which he, not you, not me, instituted for us when we went inside the veil. Is that what it says? No. Yeshua did it for us and we went inside the veil. Is that, through the veil. Is that what it says? No. Who went through the veil? Yeshua. Why? Verse 21 tells you why he went mebet la paroket, or inside the veil, because he is the high priest over the house of Elohim. He is, you're not. Sorry. That's right. Why did he get to go inside the veil of the Holy of Holies? Because he is, you ain't. Well, Rabbi, this, I'm sorry. This is too much. It's just too much. I want you to know, I've, I've, I've got songs to throw out. I have hymnals to change. I have transparencies to, to erase. Come on! This is just too much for me, Rabbi, in one sitting. I, 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 you're, you're asking us to take this all in in one sitting. Oh! Sweetheart, it's not in one sitting. It's from Genesis to Revelation. Because you need to know a little Hebrew to know that the uh, most set-apart place is never called the set-apart place. Never. 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 And you are never said to be in the most set-apart place. Unless you're greater than Yeshua, and unless Yahweh needs more than one high priest over renewed covenant Israel. He only needs one. First Timothy 2 5 says, There are a whole bunch of people from Miami Beach who are the mediators between Yahweh and man who can go inside the veil. Is that what it says? <laughs> but yet we know the veil rips. The question is, where are we? Turn your neighbor and say, Where are we? Where are we? We know that the veil ripped. We are in the head now. Why? Because, because all the sacrifices of Israel, peace, burnt offering, sacrifice offering, took place in the Makom Kadosh, and we are the priests. So who supervised in the Hekel? Who supervised the sacrifices in the Hekel? The priests. Who are you? Revelation 1.6. You are priests to Yahweh. Bingo. That's where priests go. And the veil rent to let you in to do your service. Hallelujah. The veil rent to let you in to do your service. If you think you can do your service in the Holy of Holies, please see me after the service. I'll see if I can fit you with a skull cap and get some of the waves out of your head. So why did the veil rip? To let us in. Are we not priests? Don't we draw near to Yahweh and minister in the holy place, in the Makom Kadash? Sure we do, because that's where the Levine minister. Now, we don't have to be a Levite to be a priest. You've got to be blood washed and born again and regenerated by the Ruach HaKodesh to be a priest. So every priest needs an altar and a place to conduct his priesthood. And as the priest of Yahweh, we conduct our priesthood in the Makom Kadosh, not in the Kadosh HaKadoshim, somebody. Come on. That's exactly right. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we don't go to the speaking place, or else we wouldn't need Yeshua. We don't go to the Holy of Holies, because we're not the high priest. And we don't go inside the veil, because the only one that can go inside the veil, or Bait la parroquet, is the one who gave his flesh for the sins of the world. He gave his flesh. Did you give your flesh for the sins of the world? If, if, you, if you tear up your flesh, what happens? They call 911, they put you in a mental home, and that's the end of the evening. So, so the, the only flesh that can be torn and value and bring value to lost and unregenerate man was the flesh of the son of Yahweh. 
So he is the one who has allowed us to go in by a new and living way. What is that? He has entered the veil, meaning he is the high priest. That's the Hebraic idiom. We saw that in Leviticus 16, 2, 15 and elsewhere. Leviticus 2, 16 and 15. That inside the veil is the Hebrew idiomatic expression, meaning you're in the speaking place where the Ark of the Covenant is, where, where the cherubims touch, you are in his presence. You are the Kohen of that door. Okay. How many know that you're not the Kohen Hagadol? Okay. Because there are people that think they can fly. That doesn't mean they're birds. Now let's be honest. How many religious folks do we? They're convinced that this is heresy. They are convinced that they can enter the holy of holies by the blood of the Lamb. Think about it. Yeshua Himself never entered the holy of holies never. on earth. Never. never. He stayed out. Why? Because he wasn't. He wasn't after the order of Levi. He was after the order of Melchizedek. He was going to enter in heaven. So if he can enter in heaven, that means we can't because only one high priest who can enter into the presence of Yahweh, where Yahweh dwells. What, what can we do now that we're born again? We can draw near and do our ministry in the holy place, meaning everything we do for Yahweh is considered kadosh. But we will never be the high priest. Never. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hmm. Okay, we did 1 Kings 6.16. Okay. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now I want to show you something else. Let's go to 1 Melachim. Does anyone enjoy? Come on! 1 yes. <laughs> Melachim. 6. Oh, I'm excited. I got something to share with my friends this week. First Melachim 6 and 16. I think we covered that. We did, okay. Let's try 7 and 50. First Kings 7 and 50. In Shlomo's temple, in Shlomo's house, and by the way, the Hebrew term uh, set apart place can either mean the Hekel or the entire temple edifice. Are you with me? The, the temple or the set apart place can either mean the Hekel, the Makom Kadosh, or the entire temple edifice. Do you understand me? So when someone would say, depending on the context, someone would say, I'm going to the Makom Kadosh, to the set apart place. What does scripture say in Matthew, uh, Moshe, and, Yohan, and uh, Lucas? It says the veil was rent where? in the set-apart place, but it doesn't tell you what part of the set-apart place. It, 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 depending on the context, the set-apart place could mean anywhere in the temple complex, or specifically the veil in front of the Hekel. But there was something else in front of the Hekel. Let's call them doors. <laughs> now remember, we got this religious mishmash from Daddy and Grandpa, and we got to get out of our heads. Because the well, part of the mishmash we got was the tabernacle in the wilderness was the same as Solomon's temple and the same as Herod's temple. They were all built the same way. Oh my goodness. That's the way this has been taught. They were all different. That's why we get confused. The, the tabernacle in the wilderness didn't have a court of the women and a court of the Gentiles, which was an abomination to Yahweh because he considered all worshipers to be equal. There was no court of the Gentiles. How can you say the Herod's temple, Ezra and Nehemiah built, reconstructed by Herod, was the same as the tabernacle in the wilderness? They were not the same. So if our preposition is wrong, our conclusion will be wrong. Make sense? That assures you of a wrong conclusion. They were not built the same way, and we learned earlier that in Ezra and Nehemiah's temple, we have this strange one by one cubit area between the Holy of Holies and the holy place called confusion. Why? Because they couldn't decide where the holy, because when the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BCE, 
then the rebuilders couldn't decide exactly what cubit, so they said, we don't know exactly, so we're gonna add an extra cubit because we don't know where the uh, Makom Kadosh ended and the Kadosh HaKadoshim began, and the rabbis refer to that in the Talmud as the place of confusion. <laughs> Makes sense, right? That was confusing, because they didn't know where one ended and where the other began. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Okay, so we see in uh, first Melachim 750, Shlomo made the basins, the snuffers, the bowls, the ladles, the fire holders of refined gold, the hinges of gold. Is it both for the doors of the inner house? What's that? The most set apart place. It tells you, you don't have to guess. Shlomo made doors for the inner house or the most set apart place called the what? Inner house. So now we have another term. Kadosh HaKdoshim, Makom Davir, speaking place, Beit La Parochet, inside the veil, and now we have another place, and another term is the inner house. So where the Ark of the Covenant dwelt was in the inner house instead of the outer house. So when the veil was rent, do we now have access to the inner house? No. We, what was rent was the veil to the outer house. We'll talk more in a little while. Now, but look, so the, so the door, the inner house not only had a veil or parochet, it had a set of golden doors. And notice, there was also a set of doors for the house of the Hekel. Hello. Now, here's where I'm going to start nailing this thing down. There were two sets of doors. One for the what? Makom Davir, the speaking place. And one for the Hekel or the set apart place. What does scripture say? The veil was torn where? In the inner house? No. In the Kadosh HaKdushim? No. In, in the set apart place? Does it mean what it says? Yes. Where do, we, where do we get the authority to say it doesn't mean set apart place, it means most set apart place. Where do we get that authority from? Scripture doesn't say the veil was rent in the most set apart place, it says it was rent in the set apart place. It says what it means. You don't have to figure out what it means. But I want you to notice that both the inner house and the outer house, how big was the inner house? 20 by 20 cubits. How big was the outer house? 40 by 40 cubits. And in the what? In Shlomo's temple. In Ezra and Nehemiah's temple, and Zerubbabel actually built the temple. Ezra and Nehemiah built the walls. In Zerubbabel's temple, what was that area in the middle? It was an extra cubit because, <laughs> because and it was called confusion. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Stay in First Melachim, six nineteen through twenty. So they both had doors. I want you to see that. Okay, we did that. Okay, we did that. We did that. Verse thirty one. First Melachim 631. This is Solomon's temple. Remember, all the tabernacles were not the same. Can you remember that? Yes. Would you remember that for me? Yes. They were not all the same. First Melachim 631. The entrance of the speaking place. What's another way to say speaking place? Ten. <laughs> not ten. No, that's not how you say it. That's not another word for the speaking place. Thank you. Kadosh HaKdoshim. Another name for the speaking place is Kadosh HaKdoshim. And it says in 1 Kings 6.31 that the way into the Holy of Holies, i.e. the speaking place, had golden doors of olive wood. So that the tabernacle only had a curtain. The temple had a curtain plus doors. Are you getting this? <laughs> it had not just a curtain, but it had a curtain plus doors. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Amen. Second Chronicles, Second Dibrei Hayamim 3. Second Dibrei Hayamim, give me a page when you get there. I got it, it's 877. Second Ibrahim Hayamim Chronicles 3.10. Again, describing the temple. Um, you're going to love this. 
in the most set apart house, verse 10, what's another way to say that? Most set apart house? Makom Davir, Ben La Beit La Parroquet, Holy of Holies, inner house, Tov. In the most set apart house, he made two cherubim of sculptured work, overlay them with gold, the wings of the cherubim touch, blah, blah, blah. Verse 12, the wings touched another, gives you a description. Verse 14, they made the veil blue, purple, and um, crimson. And in front of the veil, in front of the house, he made two columns. Notice, one house, the inner house. The inner house had what? Had a veil of blue, crimson, and purple. Verse 14, Second Chronicles 3, 14. The inner veil had a veil of blue, purple, and crimson. In front of the inner house, that's the what? Holy of holies. He had two columns, and on top of each was five cubits. He made wreaths of chain work to the speaking place. He put 100 pomegranates. He set up columns, okay? So we have the description of the veil, amen? Now verse 17, the, the veil and door. So the entrance to the Kadosh Noshim had what? Had doors and a veil. Now look at verse 17. He set up columns, who's he? Shlomo, Solomon. Set up columns before the Hekel, one on the right, the other on the left. He called the name on the right, Yachim, and the name of the one, Boaz. So in Solomon's temple, both the Kadosh HaKdoshim and the Hekel had a, a veil and a set of double doors. I want you to get this, because then you'll understand what happened the day Yeshua died. 